One of the most common requests I receive is how to set up two-way data sync on Google Spreadsheets. Google Sheets has several ways to do one-way data sync where there is a database and a, another sheet is pulling data from that database. That can be through the filter formula, query, import range, a manual array using curly brackets, but all of these create destinations that cannot be edited. For example, here's the sheet I created as a test. I have the list of teachers, which is just the two teachers. I have the list of all the students they teach. And then I added some scores in various disciplines so that we have some more data to work with here. So if I come to Mary's sheet, I simply set up a filter from the entire database and I left it open-ended so that as more data is added to the database, this will continue to grow and simply included everything where the teacher's name is Mary in column B. I did the same thing for John, just changing the name from Mary to John. However, if I come over here and we say, well, Mary wants to come in and mark that Adelia, yeah, she had a five on her math last time, but she's done really well and she's increased that to a seven. If we try to edit that on this end right now, it crashes the entire formula because the formula says there is data in D4 that the formula cannot override. Let's delete that so that it populates again. But I created a script to overcome this so that you can edit it from this end. Here's the script that I'm going to enable now. And it's fairly basic. So it's an on edit function. So it's going to run every single time that an edit is made to the spreadsheet. And then to make the if formula better, easier to run. I set up a variable to hold the active sheet and another variable to hold the name of the sheet. Obviously, if something is added to the database or if we edit the headers, we don't want the formula to run. So this says if the name of the sheet where the edit occurred is database or if the row that was edited is row one, then return, basically quit the script. Now here's where the important part comes in. The first action that the script takes is to clear the content of whatever was edited. I don't just want to use clear because that will also remove formatting. And in some cases there can be highlights, there can be text, like, uh, text effects like bold or italic. I don't want to get rid of any of those. So we just call a simple clear content. Then I'm going to declare a variable to hold the database itself. And we need to find the row. Now here's where this ID number becomes critical. The database is declaring the ID numbers and I wanted to make sure they were unique, they were sequential, there was nothing obscure about them. So I just set up an array formula on the ID column saying that if there is any data in column B, if there is any data in column B, then column A should populate with the row number minus one to account for the header. So this column is automatic and just fills in whenever there's data here. So if I went ahead and added John here, for whatever reason, it, it's going to populate right there. Just showing you what that array formula does. And then I, I make sure that the ID comes into the sub sheet. If the ID number does not come across, this really doesn't work. The ID number has to come across. You can hide that. Oftentimes we do because for human viewing, it's not a necessary uh, column. The data there isn't necessary for us to see. So oftentimes I see this set up where the ID column gets hidden. There just needs to be an ID column. So on the sheet we're at, SS, get the range. And the range we want is the row where the edit was made, column one. Since it's always going to be column A that has that ID. 
and then of course get the actual value. Then we're going to go find that same location on the master sheet. Now I have this set up the simplest where the columns of the master sheet and the columns of the sub sheets are identical. Sometimes I see it where we don't actually pull the teacher across or there's some other data that is on the master sheet that is not on the sub sheets. In that case, we just have to adjust the column number as well. But for the simplest setup, we want to grab what that row number was, what that ID number was. And since we're accounting for the header, we have to add one to it. But it's always going to be at the same column where the edit was made. And then we simply set the value to whatever the value was that was added to a subsheet. So running through this again, if the edit is valid, it is not on the database sheet and it is not on the header row, then delete whatever was entered, find the row number or the ID number where the edit was made, and then on the database sheet, change the value at that location to the value of the edit. And let's go ahead and try that now. So let's do the same thing. Adelia's math score went up to a seven. And as we can see, it cleared the value and reset it to the seven on the database sheet here. And again, that works because of the ID value, which is unique to every single row. The ID value is found here. The script comes back and finds that same row and the column where the edit was made and puts the edit here. Now we can do the same thing to students. Let's say, let's say Larry's name is actually Lawrence and the school wants to hold given names rather than nicknames. Lawrence has gone by Larry, but they want to actually keep the database with real names. It works here as well. Going to delete it and reset that value to Lawrence on the database sheet. I'll go ahead and put a link to the sheet itself. It's going to be view only. So if you want to have it, simply come to file, make a copy, and that will put a copy of this sheet into your Google Drive so that you can have full edit access to the sheet and the script here, and you can test this out yourself.